and scientist Astro Teller is with us. You know why I keep saying author and scientist? Because in this article about you, which I described earlier in, in Pittsburgh Magazine, it said, it implied that you corrected the uh, reporter and said, well, I'm a scientist who's dabbling as an author as opposed to... I, I didn't know did such not. thing, but maybe she implied that. Oh, or maybe that's just what I got out of it. So you don't mind me just being called an author? Or a scientist. Or a scientist. Uh, you know, until recently, Which I would was... you rather be? <laughs> I haven't decided. Or both. Uh, no? Yeah, I mean, until a year ago, I was a scientist, and I was writing a book because I wanted to write a book. But since nobody was paying me to write the book, I, I, I certainly would describe myself as a scientist. I love science, and I plan to continue loving and hopefully doing science the rest of my And you're studying life. artificial intelligence. I am. To make a long story short. Yes. Uh, well, now this, you know, people sit around at night and they say, we ought to make some money, or, you know, what can we do? You should write a book. About what? Now, this is a great idea, as I don't have to tell you, and you've obviously already thought of all this. The Internet is very hot. Uh, nothing could be more timely. The fact that it's written entirely in email conversation gives it a little interesting quirk. Did, was that your idea, and how did you come up with it? Were you just sitting around poking on the Internet one night, and a light bulb went off in your head? Or? So I decided to write a book, and I'd given myself a fairly arbitrary one-year deadline to finish. I didn't want it to drag on. I was doing this a hobby, uh, or at, at least as something that, that people weren't explicitly paying me for. So I wanted to write about something that I knew about, and I, I didn't want to have to go off and do huge amounts of research. Artificial intelligence was a very natural thing to pick. And um, once I picked artificial intelligence, there were things I already alluded to. Uh, the way that this artificial intelligence feels and has to exist inside the computer that made email, for, for very literary reasons that have nothing to do with selling books, the right format for it. Um, you know, to be honest, I really had no plans of showing this to a publisher. I was writing it entirely for myself until the book was done, at least in a rough draft form. And then what happened? Uh, what happened was that I showed it to a number of friends who loved it, um, you know, and I said, thanks, thanks, and, you know, put it back on the shelf. Right. Uh, but one of them who uh, is older, more of a mentor for me, uh, really liked it also, and he gave it to his wife, who turned out to be... Um, the editor and editor at Wired Magazine. She used to be an editor at the New Yorker. She said, oh, you've got to get an agent. I did. Wired um, Magazine is an internet magazine, right? I mean, it's it not, is. no paper. It's uh, Is that the one Michael... No, no, no. There, there's, a, there's a hardcover oh, glossy there is as well. version. Okay. As what, I think it's called uh, Hardwired. Okay. Uh, it, though it just says Wired on the top of the magazine. And then there's a Wired on the, the web, too. Hmm. Anyway, so she helped me find... Uh, some possible agents. I mailed them things, and, and once you have an agent, you know, that's the agent's job is to make things happen. And then you got some uh, nice advance from a publisher, and, and it's out in paperback first. Uh, why? Um, well, actually, so this worked out very well for both myself and the publisher. Vintage mm. hasn't published uh, original novel fiction in a, a while, eight years now, and they used to have this line called uh, Contemporary Originals. Bright Lights, Big City was one of their last sort mm. of really big hits, and they only do paperback. They're a subset of Random House, and Knopf and, and other uh, subsets of Random House do the hardcover. So they had if they wanted to restart this project of contemporary original novels, they had to find someone who was willing to publish directly in paperback, not do hardcover first, which is generally seen as, you know, the more literary way to release yourself, especially if you're a first author. Paperback first is seen as the more literary way? No, 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 no the hardcover. hardcover. That's what I right. thought. Yeah. So, right, so they have to be find someone who's willing to do something different. And so are you afraid, well, people will think this isn't the uh, highfalutin, wonderful book that it is uh, because it's in paperback first? No, not at all. I mean, especially because uh, Vintage is the publisher. I mean, that's, you that's know, a huge that's name. That's a great publisher to have on your book. So, uh, so it worked out well for them because I was happy to do that. It worked out well for me because uh, since I was willing to do that, it was, I was more attractive to them than maybe to some other publishing houses. It's and a relatively short book, and you don't want to put out you know, a really short book in, in hardcover. Right. Uh, and do you expect uh, it will also be more inexpensive that way? And do you expect your audience to be primarily a younger one, Generation X, or not necessarily? Not necessarily. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, but I don't think it has to be that way. Uh, those are probably the people who will at least pick it up first. We've only got about a minute left. I heard somebody say the other day, and this may be an absurd statement, that they're afraid the Internet will be the CB radio of the 90s, that everybody's obsessed with it now, and that it'll still exist, but but people may not be in as much of a frenzy about it in the decades hence. Do you think that's ridiculous, or...? Well, I'll tell you what I think about uh, CB radios. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that they may have died off, 
but a lot of people have cellular phones now. Ah. In the same way, the internet, as you know, in the details of how it stands now, may not look very similar in 20 years. But I'm absolutely convinced that we will continue to be connected in the ways that we are. All right, you're speaking at your alma mater, CMU, Friday, September 12th at 7 o'clock at night? Uh, no. I'm <laughs> sorry. It's probably not your fault. <laughs> I was in the uh, in Pittsburgh magazine. I think it's from about uh, 4.30 to 6.30. OK. Are you at Barnes & Noble in Squirrel Hill on Friday, September 19th? Yes. <laughs> 7.30? Yes. Chris Long, do you know him? He anchors the 10 o'clock news. Hello, Astro. Hi. And that would be next on the Pittsburgh Cable News Channel. Astro Teller, thanks so much for coming on the show. Will you come back Thank at the end of your much. big book tour? You bet. All right. The name of the book, Exegesis, available right now to find bookstore near you. Uh, thanks for coming. And tomorrow night on this program, Rick Santorum. You've heard of him, right? Yep. Big senator guy. Uh, Chris Long, straight ahead with the PCNC 10 o'clock news. Have a good evening.